Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Handyman Kevin. This is my workshop. Today we're going to be talking about some pretty basic material, tools. Specifically, the 10 critical hand tools. These are tools that everyone should own, even if you're not a professional handyman. And um, it's hard to pick 10 tools because, you know, I have a lot of tools if you've been watching this channel. However, these are the big 10. Okay, now when you go to buy these tools, remember that these are your most used tools, and they'll be with you for years. So don't get the really cheap ones because that'll just be frustrating. You want decent quality tools. The lowest quality I'd probably go would be like the store brand at a home center. So, you know, Husky at Home Depot or Cobalt at Lowe's or, you know, Craftsman at Sears. That'd be about the lowest I would go. So, without further ado, I would say the top tool is the tape measure. Now, you might wonder why. If, if you can't measure things, then how on earth are you going to cut them to length? How do you know what size bolt you need? This is the size to get. It's about 25 feet. They have big ones for surveying, little ones which are great for like in the shop. But 25 feet is great because it's a little longer than most rooms you'll ever run into in a house and it's not so heavy that you can't clip it on your belt. Now, if you go to the lumber yard or the home store, you want to wear your tape measure so you can check the sizes of things, and also because it makes you look pro. Next critical tool is a sharp knife. Now, a pocket knife works fine. I always have my Swiss Army knife on me, however, for job site use, you're probably going to want one of these, which, depending on what part of the country you're in, is called either a utility knife or a razor knife. It takes blades, which are always sharp. The blades are cheap, so when it gets dull, you just throw away the blade and put another one on. You'll use this for so many things, but especially for cutting drywall, insulation, for whittling, for opening packages of things. Now. This is the model I use and have been for a few years. It's got the blade storage in the handle. Let's see if I can show that without dumping it. So it, you don't have to have a screwdriver to open it up. That makes it really quick. It's got this weird little notch, which is supposed to be for cutting string or something. I don't know, I never made it work for me. And it's got a quick release feature. So the blades just come in and out. Uh, this is like a dollar or two more than the standard kind which use the, the screwdriver, but I find, especially if you're doing drywalling, that drywall mud always gets in there and so it's hard to get the screwdriver in. So this, this is what I recommend. Now, at this point you're probably noticing a lot of my tools are made by Stanley. and I, You're probably wondering, hey, does he have a sponsorship from them or something? Which I'd be willing if they would, but no, I don't have a sponsorship. What happened is a few years ago I showed up in California and all I owned was a spare t-shirt and the paperback I'd been writing, reading on the trip. I had nothing. And I knew, knew I needed to go to work, so I borrowed 50 bucks off my dad, went down to Walmart, and if you've been to Walmart, they have basically the, the no-brand import complete crap tools, and then their, their name brand is Stanley. So I spent my $50 on Stanley tools. Now, it's like seven or eight years down the line, a lot of them are still with me, and they're fine. Not my favorite brand, but they've given me good service. So, number three, the hammer. I actually worked with a guy when I was building trailer houses, and, you know, I was a foreman, and he said, listen, if any of your guys show up and they don't have a tape measure, a knife, and a hammer, they're not ready to work. Send them home. And he was kind of a jerk, but it's true. You really, if, if you're doing construction, you're not going to get much done unless you have at least a tape measure, a hammer, and a knife. Now, there's lots of sizes and shapes of hammers, but the handiest is this. It's sort of a medium size, 20 ounce hammer, and it's got a straight claw. This is great for digging. The other night, my, my partner was planting things in the, in the front flower bed, and she was running into all these roots and rocks and stuff, and I handed her this hammer and said, hey, just use this to loosen up the dirt. She's like, wow, that works great. Um, and, you know, we get to dig a lot of trenches in this business. 
Also good for prying. You can stick it between two boards and pry them apart. Not quite as good for pulling nails, but for all around use, this is what you want. You usually want a fiberglass or steel handle because then you can be a little rougher with it. Later on you can get other sizes and shapes of hammers, but this is the one that's going to be with you all the time. Now, after those top three, it gets a little dicey. However, I spent some time in the world of fire sprinklers, and the one thing that everyone in fire sprinklers agrees on is this is the only tool you need. Most people call these channel locks. Actually, channel lock is a really good brand. Uh, the real word for them is adjustable groove joint pliers or something like that. Everyone calls them channel locks or channies if you're a pipe fitter. And they're a great tool. You can use them from pipe. You can use them on nuts. Uh, they're adjustable so you can get any size. I've seen people using them as a hammer quite often. Not a very good hammer, but you can do it. But that's only to be it. Because these are also a good pair of tongs. So things that are too hot to pick up, you can pick up with the channel locks. They're great for bending metal. Uh, what they're really great for is pulling nails. So, you know, as long as there's a little bit sticking up, this is way better than a hammer. You just grab it, it comes out. And uh, yeah, just just a great tool to have around. You know, of all the different kinds of pliers, if I was only going to have one plier. I'd get a medium-sized pair of channel locks. Okay. Next thing is a screwdriver. Well, actually you need several kinds of sizes of screwdrivers. However, if you're going to get one, get this one, which is a multi-screwdriver. It has different bits. Now there's other kinds of multi-screwdrivers. They all suck, except for this kind. The place you usually find them is on the counter at the hardware store. They'll have a box of them right by the cash register. They cost four or five bucks. And, uh, you know, it's got little Phillips, little flat blade, big flat blade, big Phillips. This is most of the screwdriver you'll ever need. If you take the screwdriver part out, that's a nut driver. And it's cool, if, if you're working on cars or boats, it turns out that nut driver is the same size as the screw on most hose clamps. So, definitely, I keep this in my nail bag all the time when I'm on job sites. Alternately, you, you could get one of those screwdriver sets that has like four sizes of screwdrivers. That'd be okay, but, but it's, it's more pieces to carry. Okay. Next tool, which is great, is something called the 5-in-1 Pagers tool. The idea of this, it's kind of based on a, a Japanese style scraper, but the idea of this is that a guy who's painting houses can have this in his pocket, and for scraping old paint, for this part opens paint cans, this round part, no one's really sure what it does, uh, but it helps you get into corners, which is nice. So it's great for that, it, you do do a lot of scraping. It can work as a putty knife and a pinch, although it's a little stiff to give you good action. Uh, but you can use it to put it in speckle and putty. It's also a great light duty pry bar. When I'm taking off moldings or window casements, this is basically the only tool I use. I carefully hammer it behind the molding, pry out to pop the nails, and then I can take the molding off in one piece. It works great for that, or for repairs on cabinets. Um, it's rugged enough you can actually use it as a light duty chisel. So it's just it's a great tool. I know people who um, they work in places where they're not allowed to have knives, which sounds strange, but a lot of employers don't let people have knives because they're afraid they'll knife people. But they need to cut for their job. We'll take one of these and they'll sharpen the edge. And once you get used to it, it actually, you know, you can use it like a knife to open packages or, or cut things. So great tool. Now this is this is the traditional style five and one. These work great. They only cost a couple bucks. Paint stores have them, or um, hardware stores. Lately I've been using this, which is like a 14-in-1. It's a little more rugged. It has the same basic shape, but it also has a bottle opener, you know, for the end of the day. 
and it has this nail puller, which is sometimes useful, and then these two um, hex cutouts, which happen to be the same size as the tips on spray guns, if, if you're spraying paint. And then the back end is sort of reinforced, so you can use it as a hammer. And then there's a, um, a place where you can put screwdriver bits. The screwdriver part never really worked, because as soon as you use it as a hammer, that kind of deforms and you can't get the bits in, but it's, it's a nice idea. But So I've been using this more lately, but I still keep the other one on the workbench. I, ha I probably have half a dozen of them around, because like I said, they're cheap and they're, they're crazy handy. So that's something to think about. So moving on. The adjustable wrench also known as the Crescent Wrench because Crescent was the first company to come out with a good one. Still a pretty good brand. Uh, eventually you'll want a really big one and a little bitty one to get in tight spaces, but the first one you want to buy is a medium sized one which would be about 10 inches. They usually say either 10 inches or number 10 on them. And until you get like a full wrench set, this will be your main wrench for undoing bolts and things. Um, like the channel locks, it's handy for bending metal, too. Um, and so there's enough bolt-like things in the world that this is really handy to have, especially if you're doing any sort of plumbing or mechanical work. Great general tool. Okay. And then besides the tape measure, or after the tape measure, the handiest all-around measuring tool you can have is a combo square. Now, any kind of square is better than no square, but this is the best all around. I used, to, I used to be the journeyman in charge of layout in a cabinet shop, and probably the tape measure and this were um, what I used for 90% of my layout work. Now, obviously it's a square. It's also a 45 degree square. It has a level, which until you get real levels, you can do a pretty good job just by getting any relatively straight piece of wood or metal and just holding this against it. And that's a level. What it's really made for is leveling the beds and machine tools, but you probably don't have a lathe or a milling machine yet. Um, you can take this part off and use it to square off smaller things. This is what most people use to check that their table saw blade is square. It has this little pokey thing, it's actually called a scribe, which is used for scratching layouts on metal. Works on wood too, but I, I like a pencil better, or an actual awl. But it's still, it's, it's there if you need it. And then, because it's adjustable, you can use it as a depth gauge. You can put that in a hole and measure how, how deep it is. Or, you can take a pencil, I don't have a pencil, you can take a pencil and you can mark on this. And actually that's how I lay out all my joints, all my rabbits, dados, dovetails, etc. So really handy tool for layout. Really nice to have in your bag. Now, on all these tools, you don't want to get the cheapest version because these are the top 10 and you'll be using them constantly. Don't need to get the fanciest version, but you do need to get, you know, the decent quality recognizable name brand, you know, tradesman quality, because these, if you get the crappy ones, then they'll annoy you for years. So this is an ally that's, ally's okay. Uh, these cost about $15. Now, one thing this has I'm not thrilled about is the little thing that engages the blade is made out of pot metal, kind of a, a soft silvery metal. Most of the cheap ones, that seems to be the case. Unfortunately, as you slide it back and forth, that will wear out, and at that point you need to throw away the square. At one point I had a box of them that all had the little little tab worn out. The better ones have brass. Brass holds up better because it's slicker and it doesn't wear out. But, you know, considering you're probably not going to be doing layout for 10 hours a day like I was for years, you can get away with the $10 one of these. It'll be great. It'll be accurate. It measures in 60 fourths of an inch, which is plenty of accuracy for most of what you do. And it's, it's a great all-around tool. Um, don't have too many left. One addition to your toolbox that a lot of people don't bother with 
is a clamp. Uh, specifically, now, I have a lot of clamps. I still don't feel like I have enough clamps. You, you can't even see how many clamps I have, though, because half my clamps are holding up lights while I shoot this. But uh, the one you want to carry around with you in your toolbox is this, which is called an F-clamp, because it's sort of F-shaped. You want to get a 12-inch. 12 12-inch 12 is the handiest size. You'll use this to hold things onto sawhorses and tables while you work on them. You'll use this to squeeze things together. You'll use this to hold things while you're gluing them. Uh, when you're framing, you can stick one of these on a, a twisted board. And it gives you leverage to twist it straight so you can hammer it in. If you have one clamp, much better than no clamps, and get a 12-inch F-clamp. This is actually kind of a cheap brand. This is the one I picked up because it was new and clean. Which you'll notice most of my tools are sort of dirty and used. That's how you know I use them. But uh, this is the basic shape, and this is actually fine. Uh, Jorgensen is probably my favorite brand. Uh, but, you know, you, you can pick these up for $5 for this sort of Chinese quality, or maybe $11 for the name brand. And it's, it's a good investment. You will use it. And we really only have one thing left which is some kind of saw. Now, eventually you're going to get electric saws, and that's great, but you still need a hand saw, because there's still a lot of things you can't reach in with a power saw, or else they're too delicate, and the power saw would wreck them, or they're too small, and you don't want that, your fingers that close to the blade. Now, you could get western style saws, I've used them a lot. That's, as an apprentice, that's what I started out using, was regular cross-cut and rip saws. Uh, but I, I recommend the Japanese style, especially if you're just starting out. It has a lot of nice things about it. One thing is, it cuts on the pull stroke. Much easier to control, it lets the blade be thinner. So you can have this thin blade you can slip into places. And you can flex it, so you can flush cut things. Really nice. Uh, and then, this kind, which is a uh, Ryobo saw, I believe, not a Japanese speaker, you can tell, has two edges. The fine teeth are for cross-cutting, it's cutting across the grain, which is what you mainly do, because you're, you're going to be cutting boards to length. And it does a great job, you just score a line with your knife, and then these teeth will follow it real nicely. And then the other side is for ripping, which is cutting along the grain of the wood. And uh, for that, you want to keep it almost perpendicular to the board. And it does a great job with that. Now, you're saying, well, okay, that's great for wood, but I cut other things. Uh, this also works pretty good on plastics, man-made materials. Even aluminum, but aluminum will chew up the teeth. But you can do it if you have to. Uh, these are almost disposable, by the way. You don't get the, um, like, the $400 Japanese heirloom one. Get the um, $10, once it gets chewed up, you throw it away and get another one, which this basically is. This came from a home store. Uh, if another choice would be a hacksaw, which doesn't do a very good job on wood, but does better on metals and plastics. So it's kind of what you're cutting. But if, for the first saw you get, this is what I would buy. So that's that. That's the top 10. Later on, you're going to want to get specialized tools, you're going to want to get power tools. Certainly a cordless drill should be pretty high on your list because they're really handy. But just when you're starting out, this is what wants to be in your tool bag. Now the only other thing is, speaking of tool bags, you want a place to store these. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can get regular like plastic tool boxes and bags pretty cheap. But even if it's just a bucket or a shoe box, you want to keep all your tools in a place, one place, that way they won't get chewed up. And when you have a project or a repair, you can just grab that bucket and everything is in one place and you can go. So, that's that. That's the, the 10 basic tools. Hope that's useful. I'll see you again next week and we'll be getting into an actual project again. And until then, have a great week. Bye.